Back on Inside Tennessee, Susan. From each of you, what's your priority, your personal priority as far as the bills you've introduced or something for your district that would matter to, to those folks? Do each of you have anything that you're specifically working on? Jason? Sure. Uh, I've got one bill that will help uh, keep funding in schools regarding, to, regarding fundraisers. Most people don't realize right. that we have very little fundraising within our schools because they only get three tax free. If you go over those three, then it re retroactively charged tax on the first three. And a vending machine is considered a fundraiser. So we're carrying legislation that will change that to hopefully bring some of those companies here that help generate fundraising dollars just to help drive money into our schools. Richard? Mine gets back to health care and a lot of it has to do exactly what we were talking about just a few moments ago with mental illness and the opiate crisis. I have several bills dealing with that. I have several bills that will encourage the insurance companies to treat mental illnesses just like they do other medical illnesses. So some of these treatments that we're requiring can get paid for uh, and uh, and that's really what's going to be my focus for the rest of the of the, of the mm -hmm. session. I think I have about 60 bills altogether, but a lot it's of them. It's a lot. So Richard <laughs> wow. wow. was not fond of legislation that forced private companies to do things. And what comes to mind is the proton therapy coverage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question is, have you had a talk with Governor Lee, and does he seem to take a different approach? You know, I've not had a uh, talk with Governor Lee, and, you know, we were talking about, well, why haven't they done it a moment ago? He's only been the governor for a month, and we have not heard what his budget's the going to be. over. They, no uh, state of the state. We haven't even heard what his budget's going yeah. to be, but before I criticize something, our, 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 our uh, yeah, and I'm not critical because I don't know what it's going to do I don't either. know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I think we just have to wait and see until we hear the, you know, the state of the state address. When is the state of the state? It's March 4th. March, March 4th. 4th. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ken? I want to work on and continue to work on funding for the uh, programs that support the intellectually uh, disabled and developmentally disabled. Right. Uh, the, the, formula, the formula that governs the pay for what we call the direct support personnel, the men and women who actually literally hands on some very fragile people, that formula is, 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 is funded through the legislature and administered through DIDS. And uh, w we have some real issues there of, of replacing some non-recurring money with recurring funding so we can s continue to to provide adequate uh, funding for uh, these people, these employees. And that is certainly a priority of mine to make sure that they get to their just due. Quick hit, quick question. Sex week, don't run. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Oh, I was going to ask about sex week. Um, you all recently heard from the Comptroller's Office about what it had found in terms of how UT handled it. Just curious, are you over it? Uh, do you think more needs to be done? Do you have any thoughts, Jason? Let me start with you. Well, we've met with uh, uh, President Boyd a couple of times, and I have confidence in the new leadership of the University of Tennessee. It will be addressed. He said some interesting things. He, he did he a couple weeks ago on your show. The mm -hmm. first time he probably didn't make some friends with faculty and students. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've got confidence in our leadership at UT, and I think that, among other things, are being addressed and will be addressed. Dr. Briggs? I think this is going to be a balancing act between First Amendment rights for yes, some of the students sure. and what the UT can do, and, and it, this can either turn out really well or really bad. <laughs> and Dr. Yeager. Uh, well, I, uh, Jason's spot on. I think that uh, Randy Boyd has done a really good job in his response to, the, uh, to this issue, and I'm confident that his leadership will see us through this. I'm, I'm really optimistic about that, having it, talked to him. To see it through, it mean cancel it? Uh, to, f to find not t to find something that uh, the constituents of my districts can support. What about <laughs> modify? We'll say modify. Well, it's pretty much an educational program now, so I think it's gr the mythology has grown around that week. That but while the there might be some change. salacious things that go on, it's not very I, much. I and saw it's, last it's year's program. It's, right. it's, more it's not very popular no. with the students. No. no. It's like 500 or so that it's take part. Much ado yeah. about nothing. A lot, of not a lot of money, though, a lot of student fees mm -hmm. is going to for it. Going which to more, that's more than the thing that kind of struck me. I was like, wow, a lot of that money is going for sex. Week. Second mm -hmm. only to drugs or the use of opioids. I get more calls from my district on sex. <laughs> Second only. To I bet none of them are students. Uh, Ken. We're going <laughs> to they're <laughs> taxpayers. <laughs> they're they're taxpayers. taxpayers. We're going to close on sex and drugs here on this Sunday morning. Now it's time to go to church. No rock and roll. We appreciate you watching. You catch us all the time at WBIR.com. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you.